In this video, we'll consider a potpourri of transformations and have a short discussion about each one. Basically, we'll just try to decide whether the transformation is linear or not. Well, the first one, the input is a function and the output is the function squared. And there's sort of a dead giveaway for non-linearity and it's the function being squared. So a function can be multiplied by a number or as we'll find out later by another constant unchanging function, but cannot be squared. So you'll have to develop a little bit of intuition of what breaks linearity and what doesn't break linearity. And this sort of thing definitely breaks linearity. Let's just try the multiplication test. What would happen if we multiplied a function by five and then transformed it versus transforming the function first and then multiplying it by five? Well, if we multiply the function by five first, in other words, plug in five x, five f of x, what will come out is this, that thing squared or 25 f squared of x. And if we did it in the opposite order, transform the function first and then multiply by five, transforming the function would yield f squared of x and then multiplying it by five would be five f squared of x. So we're comparing five f squared of x to 25 f squared of x, and there you go, the results don't match. This is not a linear sort of thing to do with a function. And uh, the sum test would also fail. I will not write f of x, but let's just compare adding two functions first and then transforming versus transforming individual functions and then adding up the results. Well, if we add them first and then transform them, what we would get is, of course, by the quadratic expansion formula, x f squared plus 2fg plus g squared. That's the result of adding the functions first and then transforming them. Doing it in the opposite order, transforming them first and then adding them would of course yield this. And there's once again a mismatch between adding first and then transforming or in transforming first and then adding. So nonlinear. In fact, whatever function you apply to f of x, other than multiplication by a constant, would pretty much result in a nonlinear transformation. If you evaluate sine of f of x, or log of f of x, or one over f of x, or f of x to any power other than one, no matter what sort of complicated, relatively complicated thing you do to f of x, that will be a nonlinear transformation of functions. So not linear, can't even ask the question of eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. Moving on to the next one, also smells of something nonlinear. There's something nonlinear going on. But in this case, it doesn't matter. So you just have to play the sum test in your head and decide whether or not it matters or doesn't matter what you do first. Well, here x squared gets plugged in. And if you just plug something into f of x, right? You can kind of see that if you have two functions and you plug in something into each one of them and add them together versus adding them together, now you have f of x plus g of x and now you have to plug in x squared into that combined expression, into that summation, you'll end up with the same thing. So when you're plugging things in, it's much more tolerant from the point of view of linearity. So f of x squared, f of sine of x, f of log of x, f of any crazy function of x is still, it transforms the function, but in a linear way. It does something very skewy to a function or very, something very unusual to a function. If you look at its graph, it can change it completely. But when you do it to the sum, it's the same as doing it to the individual elements and then adding up the elements. That's the nature of plugging something in. Same thing with multiplication by a constant. So although we're plugging in x squared here, this is still in essence similar to dilation, which we considered in a previous video. So even though this may look nonlinear, it's actually still a linear transformation. And we could talk about its eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, but it's not such an interesting transformation. I don't know if it has any applications. So we're just gonna move on to the next transformation and see whether that's a linear transformation. Well. There's something very non-linear looking about this transformation as well, and that's sine of x. But you have to realize that just multiplying a function by sine of x, right, once again, transforms the function to like quite a bit. We turn x squared 
into huge wiggles for which x squared is merely the envelope. So it does something very dramatic to a function, but that transformation is still linear. And again, it's easier to just play out the scenario in your mind than writing anything on the board. Does it matter whether you add two functions first and then multiply them by sine of x? Or whether you multiply each individual function by sine of x and then add together the results? The same thing by the distributive property of ordinary numbers. Right? So yes, sine of x looks very nonlinear. It's a very nonlinear function. But if all you're doing is multiplying the input function by it, it's still a linear transformation. And once again, this transformation could have its eigenvalues and eigenfunctions and so forth. Not so interesting. The question of linearity on its own is much more interesting. So moving on to the last transformation where we add x to f of x. This might be the opposite. This actually looks very innocent. And your first instinct might be to say, well, that's linear. f of x, just itself, and then plus x. But it's not. Right? This is akin to translation. Recall geometric vectors and what translation means. Translation means adding a constant vector to whatever the input is. So the output is the input plus some vector that's constant across all functions. And that's what's happening here. Whatever is the input, you're just adding a constant function. The function itself is not a constant. It's constant in the sense that whatever the input, all the inputs get the same vector added on to them. That's the sense in which it's constant. It's independent of f of x. Of course, it's not a constant function. It's a linear function. But from the point of view of analyzing whether or not this is linear, this is akin to translation. This is like shifting everything by a, the same function. And of course, it's not linear. Because if you add the two functions first and then transform them, you'll have the sum plus x. And if you transform individual functions and then add them together, you'll have the sum plus x plus x, x from each of the transformations. So you'll have the sum plus 2x. So this innocent looking function is actually not linear. So not linear, 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 not linear. So now we've seen examples of familiar transformations, completely unfamiliar transformations like dilation, but that leaves more intriguing questions that it answers. And finally, a hodgepodge of pretty unimportant transformations that also uh, demonstrate nonlinearity and of course, linearity as well. All right, so that completes our discussion of functions and we're going to move on to vectors in Rn.